Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Jag Bros, and this is a depressing and angered-filled episode as we just watched the Jaguars lose to a very bad Browns team. We should be 2-0. and uh, The Dolphins, as we saw on Thursday night, are not good. Should have beaten them. And then the Browns did everything they could to give us this game, and uh, I mean, we just didn't want it at all. Uh, came out dead. The only life we had at all is coming from our rookie BTJ. Uh, but I mean, everyone else just is dead, and I don't understand why. Yeah, listen, we're diehard Jags fans, and unfortunately, as diehard Jags fans, lifelong Jags fans, this is nothing new. But it doesn't mean that we're not angry, upset, frustrated because it is nothing new. The Jaguars are now one in seven in their last eight games. Oh, and that win was not even Trevor Lawrence. That was our backup quarterback that we just cut, CJ Bethard. And so last episode, the preview one, go listen to it. All three of us predicted a big win for the Jaguars. That did not happen. And I said, if the Jaguars lose, I'm going to embrace my inner villain. Well, it's time. The Jaguars, I'm not believing in them until they finally show up and win a game. This team is not good. They're not a contender. This team has major problems, and they've had problems for a long, long, long time. Before JT jumps in and probably crushes the Jaguars, I just want to say my two cents is I do think that this is a talented team. I think it is different. It's just playing so poorly. It's poorly coached. There is no enthusiasm on this team. I'm watching bad teams play well because they're coached well when we have a talented roster where that is different than the old Jaguars where, yes, we didn't play well, but we also didn't have anyone on the team. No one expected that much out of us. The roster was not as talented as this one is. It's just head scratching that no one seems to do their job, know what their job is, or have any sort of self-respect for themselves. So this is kind of new, I think, that the Jags are performing so poorly, but yet have an actually talented roster. I said at the end of last episode that I was going to lose it if they somehow lost again. I thought it was impossible. I said over and over and over again that there were many ways to win that game. And lo and behold, there were many ways to win that game. And guess what? We did none of them. The, the, the offense looked awful all game long. We're right now bottom five in just about all the metrics that matter. We're bottom five in scoring on offense. We're bottom five in plays run. We're bottom five in third downs. We're bottom five in all those things. It's a disaster. And all you've done is supposedly improve the talent on the offense. The offense looks terrible. And before every Jaguar fan says, oh, well, the, the offensive line is bad. Yes, the offensive line is an absolute train wreck. But if you actually look at the advanced metrics, most of Jacksonville is middle of the road from an offensive pressure perspective. You, that they're ranked somewhere between 15 to 20 on pressure percentage given up, and that they're ranked 15 to 20 on percent time in the backfield. You know what that means? It's on the quarterback. The quarterback looked like Blaine Gabbard out there putting up 16 yards passing in the first half. It's terrible. Nobody wants to win this game. The defense played fine, but just like last week where the where Trevor played fine, nobody wants to win this game. Joey, you said it they were flat they were flat from the get-go to come out here scripted plays that that are that our offense is supposed to be putting together it was awful we're immediately going three and out three and out meanwhile the browns hold the ball for 10 minutes and, and put together and scrape together a drive where stefanski is just pantsing our defensive coordinator who's supposedly a whiz kid that offense is terrible for the browns they are not a good team they were missing their two tackles and then oh by the way their backup tackle got hurt middle of the game and our in our supposedly stud defensive ends had one sack between the two of them it was terrible trevor lawrence right now is 0 and 11 in his last 11 starts it's not good we've lost eight of nine games we haven't won since middle of november it feels like outside of the the panthers game which the panthers don't even look like an nfl team at this point the play design's terrible all of the things that i've been saying all offseason, I men and blacked myself where I where I, I just forgot all that the complaints I had all offseason said this is the time, this is where we're going to put it together uh, based off the preseason play. And we looked terrible on all three phases. We we're even missing kicks, field goals. If we had made that field goal, the game's different. 
what is so boggling to me is that this offense can be very good, but it's just so poorly run and poorly coached. Yes. I can fix this offense in literally maybe two practices. And you want to know how to do that? Yes. This team and this offense is a shotgun offense. Quit going under center. Quit having long developing pass plays when your offensive line is suspect at best. We're sitting in the end zone two yards and you don't draw up a quick pass play or a run play. No, 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 no. Trevor sat back there and waited for a play to develop. Why are we waiting on long developing pass plays? You are a shotgun offense. The best part of 2022, Travis Etienne, all of his runs were run out of the shotgun. Our entire offense was run out of the shotgun. When did we go under center? We wait an entire 40 seconds until the clock is at zero yes. seconds before we snap the ball. Everyone is so dead and has no energy because there is just no energy in the players because the schemes are so boring. Everything that we ran in the offseason, we aren't running. What we ran in the preseason, throwing it over the middle, plays looking better, offense actually had some life because they were good plays. All those went away. We are now trying to run the ball. We're trying to make this team into a team that it is not. It is a pass-first shotgun thing, and then you add the run in there to surprise them. They're like, oh, they're passing, and all of a sudden you, you uh, do a draw up the middle. That's how you run this offense, not a we're going to run the ball and we're going to try to run it through the guards or through the tackles. This offense can't do that. And to have a coach just – think that you can because eventually it may work that's not how it works you have to know what your strength is and that's a two minute a quick shotgun offense and yet we don't ever seem to run that and it's disgusting these coaches are disgusting i i hate doug peterson i hate press taylor i don't know how doug ever won a super bowl i think he is dumb i think he may have dementia it, it's so so poorly poorly run and anyone with eyes can see that this offense is so poorly run. You have two guys that are six foot two, yet we're throwing the jump ball to Christian Kirk. Yes. Evan Ingram, your guys hurt. Now it's time to change. And yeah, Britton Strange did okay, but you don't need to throw to him every single play. There was a series where we threw every ball to Britton Strange. What you was that? The number one, uh, you have a first round draft pick. You have Gabe Davis, who's fairly good and he's 62 and he's tall and big bodied like a tight end. You have Christian Kirk who's a slot guy, run him over the middle, drags, outs, anything to get him moving, but no. No, 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 no. Let's let's run it up the middle. Let's throw it to our tight end. Let's be a power eye offense which is it's just disgusting. Well, that's why Jaguars fans are so mad because it'd be one thing if we were 0-2. Look, the, the Ravens are 0-2, the Bengals are 0-2, but those fans have hope. The reason the Jag fans have no or very, very little hope, if you're crazy enough to have hope right now, the reason we don't have hope is because it's been the same problems for so long. And I agree a million percent, Joey, anyone who watches the Jags fans, NFL analysts, NFL insiders, but also every Jags fan is saying this team is coached poorly on offense. It doesn't work in the definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. And that's what it feels like. Every press conference is just like, oh, well, we're just going to clean it up. We just have to coach better. We just have to play better. We can't keep doing the same thing and expect something totally different. And so if Shad Khan is going to say, hey, this is the most talented team in Jaguars history and we're about to start 0-4, then something has got to change drastically because we can't keep doing the same thing and expecting any sort of wins. This is not the most talented team in Jaguar history. This oh, is agreed. the most overplayed team in Jaguars history. Joey, you, you nailed a ton of points right there, and I'm spot on. Every single play on offense, we're waiting until two or one second left on the on the play clock before snapping the ball. How many we, we had to waste two timeouts in the red zone in the first half. Those two timeouts could have really been useful to get a field goal, which, oh, by the way, was the difference between the game before we got a freaking safety. 
Like, it's terrible. The, the play design, I've said for a year and a half, our, our wide receiver trees are weak. That was my problem with Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, I think, is a good receiver as he scores two touchdowns last week for Tennessee. The fact is, we just never put him in positions to win. We have no short game. We, we almost never throw a quick slant or anything that gets the ball out fast. All the plays are are, are just uh, just long down the field plays or little three yard outs. And look, Jack, you said it. The Ravens, the Bengals, and the Rams are all 0-2. Guess what? All those teams are way better than Jacksonville is right now, and there's an 11% chance of somebody starting out 0-2. All of those have a better chance than we do. And when I'm watching Sunday Night Football, I'm watching C.J. Stroud. Guess what he's doing? He's weaving around defenders. They the The... The Bears have a really good front four and front seven. They're getting a ton of pressure on him, and all he's doing is throwing dimes to his wide receivers way downfield. That's not something Trevor Lawrence has done pretty much at all since being in Jacksonville. Look, I got news for you, Jacksonville. When we go play the Bears in three weeks, that is by far not a guaranteed win because guess what? They have the pass rush to be able to just give Trevor Lawrence nightmares, multiple turnovers, and probably 150 yards passing is what I'm projecting for that game. Well, I'm going to say it again. There is no guaranteed win until they prove it. Unless we play the Panthers, which unfortunately we don't play this year. So they're going to have to w- win and earn any game. There is going to be no game where even if they're favored, that we as Jags fans are going to feel good about. That's just how poorly we played the last eight, nine months in, in Jacksonville. I don't think that this is an untalented team. I just think that it is so poorly run the amount of times i watched us all squish into the middle all the wide receivers all together and you don't do that when you have a bad offensive line you spread it out you try to get everyone out of the box and yet we're bringing everybody into the box it's like let's add more defenders to block uh so this bad offensive line is put into worse situations there no one is helping anybody out you need to move back and do a shotgun. You need to do draw plays. Not We're not good enough to just run dives and stretch plays. You're going to have to get run plays that you catch them off guard. You need to spread everyone out. Get everyone out of the box. Try to give Trevor enough room to move around in the pocket instead of squeezing it in so much. And hey, over the middle works. Why do we not throw it over the middle? The first play, a... Nine-yard stop to Britton Strange right over the middle. Guess what? It was wide open. Could have done that multiple more times. Didn't do that. Where were the quick passes? That was what I said we needed to do at the beginning of the game. I said, we need quick passes. So this is going to be a game for Evan Ingram and Christian Kirks. Quick slants. And every quick pass was open. BTJ had his first drop, but that was a wide open quick pass. Britton Strange, wide open short play pass. But how many times did we do that again? Like zero. Why are we trying to do long plays to the outside? We're trying to take as long as we can in the huddle. And no one knows what they're doing. We have illegal shifts to wipe out uh, touchdowns. And by the way, this is the most not tough mentally team that I've ever seen. They're any soft. Sort, any sort of like thing that goes wrong. That drive is over. One penalty, that drive is over. It's raining, that game is over. One turnover, that game is over. They are so soft. There is no one that can say, hey, you know what? That happened, but I'm going to go make a play. They talked about we were waiting for the spark last year. Well, they're waiting around for the spark again. No one is providing it other than PTJ. And I feel bad for him because he is ready to take off. He is chirping at people. He's making plays. And yet we're not targeting him. He's not getting plays drawn up for him to get open. It's disgustingly run. And and they're sitting there like, oh, you know, we're just making mistakes. We'll figure it out. No, stop running the same plays and hoping that they'll finally figure it out. It's time to pick a new offense. It's time to scratch what you're doing and start over and figure out what everyone is good at and do that. Because trying to be a run offense first and then do a play action pass and we could throw it down the field. And that's just not this offense. That's never been this offense. You look at Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's had a terrible offensive line. Literally, 
since he joined the NFL. And all he does is continually put up gaudy numbers and he looks awesome. And it's not because he is an escape artist. It's not because of those things. It's because they're designing plays to the, that, that, with the expectation that they don't have a great offense line. Sometimes they're leaving extra players to block, which is exactly what the Browns did. The Browns left additional players to block to, to give the Watson time to, to dissect our defense at times. The other yeah, thing that they're their doing tight end is, was a tackle the entire game. Exactly. I mean, which, that's, that's which good. Britain strange is supposed to be Britain strange which, is supposed to be a Brent, run block. Strange is no kind of, tackle. He, he could no, no, he's supposed to be, no, no, he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be a, a block first tight end. in Cole Van Lannan, who by the way, was the best graded preseason blocker. Bring him in and add another blocker, but no, no, no. Let's get Britain strange. Who's a tight end who is supposed to be somewhat good at blocking, but he's not. And, by the way, those teams that understand that their offense line isn't good, they don't lie to themselves. This offense and this team lies to themselves. They yes. lie to their fans. Yes. They say that this offense yes. line is good enough to play. They lie to themselves and tell yes. you that there are just Amen. mistakes and we can fix it. They are delusional and they lie and gaslight themselves into believing false narratives. It is time Amen. to wake up. You are not that team. You are not that coach. You are not that offensive line. It is time to realize that you have to change things up. Guess what? Bobby Slovic with the Houston Texans knows he doesn't have a good offensive line and draws up plays perfectly for C.J. Stroud and his offense to be a very good offense. And yet we do not do that. We just lie and say that we can run it up the middle or they just miss an assignment. No, they're just not good enough. That is the clear and honest question. Quit lying to yourself. They're soft. Yeah. I, the amount of times I've seen us on third and fourth and one or third and fourth and short, it feels like it's a 10% chance of us getting it. Flip it on the defense. It feels like it's a 99% chance they get a third or fourth and one. They brought Jameis Winston in multiple times on fourth and one. Didn't matter where it was. They felt like it was automatic, and it was. That, to me, is, is mental toughness. That, to me, is just strength. And, Joe, they're soft. It's a soft team that is part of a loser organization that just loves to lose. The Jaguars love to lose. Yeah, well, it's hard to argue inside. And really, this is this is free therapy for us. Hopefully, this is free therapy for you as Jags fans. And to me, as y'all are talking about this, two big drives stand out for the offense in these first two weeks. The first, we talked about it a ton in the breakdown of the Miami game, was a drive with four minutes to go. The game is tied. What happens? Three plays, two sacks, fourth and long, big punt. The other drive, of course, is less than two minutes to go. You need a field goal to tie, drive the length of the field. What is the first play? A sack out of the back of the end zone and a safety. So four big plays for the offense, three sacks, and that safety play, of course, has been beaten to death, but it needs to be beaten even more because you should not be going for a uh, a, a first down on the two yard line bomb to Brian Thomas Jr. When you know your offensive line is terrible, and when you know you're going up against an incredible defensive line and one of the best defenses, it is crazy. Trevor Lawrence was looking for Brian Thomas Jr. And yes, he was open 30, 30 yards down the field, but you're not going to have enough time to make that throw. The big plays. Every defense knows what to do against the Jaguars offense and it's blitz. It's bring the house because they're never going to stop them. And Trevor's going to hold the ball too long. And it's just, you're, we're going to see this over and over and over and over again. The only chance the Jaguars ever have to win is to be way up early, which is impossible because this team always starts flat. And so it's a mess. No, the only way this team wins is if somehow the defense doesn't blitz and then they decide, oh, we're going to rush three and we're just going to let Trevor have all day to throw the ball because that's what he needs. He needs Which all day. Which doesn't happen in the NFL. Uh, exactly. Uh, you maybe get one game where something happens and they decide not to rush it for some odd reason, but it, it's just not going to happen because everyone has figured this out and we haven't made any sort of change to uh, see where our weaknesses are. Any Anyone who plays Madden or NCAA, any wannabe, you know, coach, manager, you are on the two-yard line. JT, what play do you run? There are two different plays that you can run on the two-yard line. What are they? 
You could run a run up the middle. <laughs> or you could do a quick pass, like a quick slant. Jack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, those would be exactly what you would do. I'd probably do a quick slant because running up the middle didn't work a ton, but yeah, you you do a quick slant, which you talked about. BTJ was open for one earlier and dropped it. And Brenton Strange, he had a couple catches that way. Yes, exactly. A quick pass. No one in their right mind is like, here, let me allow Trevor to sit back there. He had over three seconds before that guy was there. I understand the offensive line did terribly. Two guys missed their block for that guy to get through. It, it shouldn't have even mattered. The play should have been a quick one-second pass where even if you had no offensive line, you still get the pass off because it should have been a you catch the ball, you throw it right away, slant or stop or dig or anything that's very quick. But no, 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 it's the offensive line's fault. And yes, they play terribly, but guess what? It's still up to the coaches to realize what you have. When, JT, you've been a sales manager, if you realize that your team isn't doing very well, do you have them call the same leads and bang their head on the same old stuff? Or do you switch it up and find a new routine? Do you just try to coach them up and maybe they'll eventually become the sales team that you want them to be? Well, he, look, he, th th there's value to not panicking, right? There's value to trying to figure out what is the, is, it, is there an issue with how I'm designing the plays or what I'm doing, or is it a situation and we're just getting quote unquote unlucky for a little bit, or is it something that is systematically wrong with what I'm doing and how I'm doing it? I can tell you at this point, we've had enough data. It is system systematically wrong. Doug has to fire press tomorrow that like it, the change has to come we saw buffalo do it they fired their offensive coordinator in the early october and their team was significantly better on offense the rest of the year you have to do something you have to talk the panic button needs to be pressed in jacksonville because you are well beyond just ma making a couple tweaks or hey it's just about execution sure it's about execution but the reality is your quarterback is not who you think he is he is way more like jared goff somebody who does well against non on pressure but crumbles against pressure or wet, more similar to I mean I, like I said the fourth quarter is more similar to Blaine Gabbert than anybody uh, honestly Blake Bortles at times had some level of of clutchness the, uh, going backwards on drives is a, is a classic Blaine Gabbert type of play so to me you have to start to accept the reality is you probably have somebody who's more similar to the 15th or 20th best quarterback in the NFL and not a borderline top five guy who I think we've been thinking he is. And with that in mind, design plays and design an offense around that. So there's some key strategic assumptions that I feel like they've been making that have just been incorrect, mind boggling to me. And look, look at the schedule. You're going to lose to Buffalo at home, or excuse me, on the road on Monday night. You're going to lose to Houston. They're significantly better in just about every phase of the game. They're certainly better coached. The Colts uh, at home should be a win. But then you're gonna Oof. then you're gonna play the Bears and the Patriots. The Patriots are a tough team this year. They're not an easy out. Like I don't see. Then you go Packers, Eagles, Vikings who are good, Lions who are tough. There's really only like three or four possible victories on the schedule. It's time to start talking about the draft. I wouldn't say that this team is talented enough. If we aren't delusional and change how we play, it can be turned around but the problem is it won't happen if we keep lying to each other the fact lying to is, yourself right now it's not going to be turned around there, it's there, what, trevor what, lawrence is a drastically different quarterback and a two-minute offense and shotgun i called for it all last year in 2023 i told you all about it in 2022 when how about, we that, how about that two minute offense that we got to see multiple times in the fourth uh, quarter, the second and the, the second quarter three sacks, the, multiple sacks and, and just it's terrible. I, I mean, here's the thing on that last drive. So, yes, the, the safety was bad, but somehow by a miracle, you get a chance to still win the game. If Crazy. you score a touchdown in a minute and a half. Well, look, at look, there's three or four plays. BTJ is, is lined up and there's nobody within 30 yards. Just take 10 yards and move the ball downfield. Just do that multiple times. But no, instead, we're, we're actually throwing the ball over the middle for the first time. And, and we're running off 40 seconds every play. Oh, no, I know it's that's that's extremely bad 
clock management and very bad coaching. It, I mean, the two-minute offense needs to be coached up, but the problem is they spend the entire practice working on how to run the ball under center, and uh, they're wasting their time on dumb things when this team is a shotgun team, and it's mind-boggling that, that we just try to be something that we're not. Here's the thing, because we know Shad Khan is, of course, listening. But he, he's got to make a decision at this point. The offense is broken, period. There is no question. There is no debate. And you can't keep doing the same thing. So the reality is you have two options. You either tell Doug, hey, you either got to tell Press to pack or you've got to pack yourself because that has become the narrative very much now. It's no longer is it just Press has to leave. It's Press and Doug. They've got to get out because – they, they've become so synonymous, whether Doug views press as a son or whatever it is, the same thing happened in Philadelphia. And the reality is, as you talked about earlier, Joey, yes, Doug Peterson has won a Super Bowl, but that is his only season with more with double digit wins. Every other season has had less than 10 wins. And this team clearly is on pace for less than 10 wins. So you either have to make that decision or if the Jags go 0-4, then you're going to have to bench your $275 million investment and put in Mac Jones because there's really no other option at this point. It's got to be one of those two. And I'm going to guess, at least I'm going to say for sure from me, it's got to be you've got to change the OC slash head coach, which I love, Doug. Hey, thank you, Doug, for 2022. Thank you for bringing some excitement and some uh, some fire, a playoff win in Jacksonville in 2022. But that is long gone. And this team is a mess. It's trending in the wrong direction. There is doom and gloom again in Jacksonville. And one of these coaches, if not both of them, have to go. There's no other way. Unless you're just going to bench the guy you paid more than a quarter of a billion dollars, which makes no sense to me. You've got to try him with either a new head coach or a new OC or a new both. How about a new it's, GM, too? Because, the, the, the Joey, you keep saying that the team is, 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 is talented. And, yes, they are more talented than what they're showing, which is, is on the coaching. But at the end of the day, this team is not that, that talented either. I mean, if you're looking I at top to bottom, th there's no, there's not a whole lot of people that scare you. Your first round pick last year was beat, uh, excuse me, was uh, Anton Harrison, who looks like a not a startable right tackle right now. I like which, to see Walker which, Little at this what, point. What is what is up with that? Which also just screams coaching to me because Anton Harrison was the only guy that improved, got better, got better, got better last year, and now looks like a, a, a train wreck at offensive tackle. It's yeah, Phil it, Rauscher. I've called for him to be fired all last year. It's insane that we had such a bad offensive line last year, and then he kept his job, and we didn't even give him really extra talent other than Mitch Morrison, who has looked slightly better than Luke Fortner. It, it's disgusting how poorly that this offense is run, and it's it's over for Doug. His chance to save his job was over the offseason. It is now him, Doug, Phil, every single person running this offense. I mean, heads need to roll. This this is the worst offense in the NFL other than uh, the Panthers, who has Bryce Young, who's a small man who can't even see over his offensive line. And it's just so sad because I think BTJ is the best wide receiver out of this draft class. I think Evan Ingram hot is take. a top five. I don't think it's a hot take. I mean, look what he's shown us with the few targets that he has had. Joey missed Evan Marvin Ingram Harrison going off. Five, and, uh, Joey, did you miss the 200 yards and three touchdowns Marvin <laughs> Harrison had? Or the or 18 Malik neighbors. Oh, yeah, Malik neighbors, like 12 catches. Yeah, with 18 targets. If you targeted BTJ that many times, he'd have the same stats. He's working off of three targets. It's a very different story whether you get the ball thrown to you. And it's not because he's not open, because he is open. Plays aren't drawn up for him. Trevor's not looking at him. It's gross and disgusting how poorly mismanaged this is. You have Evan Ingram, who just got hurt, but who was a top five tight end. You have uh, Etienne, who I think is a very good running back. Trevor, who, fine, maybe he's not top five quarterback, but he's a top 15 quarterback. Maybe. You have uh, Christian Kirk, who was a very good wide receiver. You know, where he's gone, I don't know, but... 
like you had talent on this team and it's just so poorly mismanaged. It looks like the government with our taxes, how poorly it's run. Jack, remind me who our, who our current second round pick was. Mason Smith, D tackle out of LSU. Uh, did Mason Smith play yesterday? Ooh, no, uh, he, was maybe a inactive. he was inactive. Thank no, you. He was inactive. Second round pick who should be somebody who's making an impact. Oh, by the way, the Bears second round pick Lassiter, Kamari Lassiter got an interception and in three tackles yesterday against the Bears. Meanwhile, our second round pick didn't even dress. He wasn't even good enough on a very mid defensive line right now. I don't know if it was because he wasn't isn't good enough. Uh, he could yes! be injured. I, I don't know. I, injured. He's not injured. He's not been good enough to crack the 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 rotation, and we've been screaming all the, the whole time. He played we're not fine against the Dolphins, so I don't know why he would have been uh, inactive. He had he didn't have a tackle, but there were multiple times that he had. Holding Mason calls. Smith is Brenton Strange. He's, you know, he's a, a borderline second or third string player. Not going to say that he played well against the Dolphins and it's not his fault if the coach didn't I don't play know that him, he had a which, tackle against the Dolphins. I don't, he didn't, but he also had two holding calls. <laughs> he, no, he had two holding calls uh, held up against him. Uh, so those are huge plays. And he yeah. was also in the backfield quite often. So I, I don't think he's that terrible. I don't know why he's not playing. I also don't know why Josh Allen now looks not that great. Trayvon Walker was nowhere to be found. Armstrong's the slowest D end apparently that we've ever had. That's why he's a D tackle, not a D end, because he moves as slow as Hamilton, who's a nose tackle. It, like which, which Armstead is your biggest off season signing of this past year. So for all the bulky hype, all of the this is the most talented team. If you're saying Armstead, who did not have fifty percent snaps yet again in this game, is looking slow, not making big plays. That's another swing and a miss for Balky so far. No, he's making big plays. He's getting there, but he's on the outside, and he's not quick enough to get to the quarterback. And the Deshaun Watson made a tiny little stutter step, and then uh, Armstead is lost because he is not fast enough to get turned around and go chase him down because he's a D tackle, not a D end. And I don't know why we keep trying to put players in positions that they're not Traded away our other DN to the Seattle Seahawks for nothing for a sixth round pick. So grossly mismanaged. It's just oh, so, so bad. I think that this team actually can be good, but everyone running it is shooting themselves in the foot. I think the GM did a fairly good job getting people, but now is not running this team. The coaches aren't coaching this team. The Defense isn't looking for turnovers. Jarian Jones had the ball in front of his face and couldn't pick it off because he was too busy, happy that he broke it up. Hey, how about actually getting a pick? Uh, the defensive line is going up against backups and third strings, and we aren't getting pressure. And, oh, by the way, when we do get pressure, all it takes is a little stutter step, and then they're running down the field, and they can't close and finish a sack. Because I guess we don't practice finishing sacks. And the only person on this team that looks like they can make a tackle is Monteric Brown, who, by the way, incredible open field tackles. Absolutely great. I've been a corner and safety. Those are so hard. And he came up and made big plays. But other than that, that defense looked trash. Yeah. And look, Stefanski pantsed Ryan Nielsen for most of that game. I mean, the, the, the jumble, the jump, he ran man beater after man beater after man beater. We made some adjustments in the second half to keep them off balance. But in that first half, he was running drags against Monteric Brown. He was running uh, uh, jumbo sets where he's putting three wide receivers in and just using all these different misdirections to basically scheme his guys open because that wide receiver room is not very good. And look, Monteric Brown had a great game. He had 11 tackles. He was everywhere, but he's also targeted a lot because he's not, does not have the top end skill to play man to man defense against 
better wide receivers in the NFL. And we just didn't see, we're not even, we're going to see a lot better wide receivers. The majority of the games we're going to be playing against than who we saw on Sunday against the Browns. The defense played fine, but how many times, I mean, this is 2013 Jags where we can't score and uh, we move backwards on, on the key, on our key drives in the fourth, uh, in the fourth quarter. And then the defense in general played pretty well, except for every single time we somehow gave all the fourth and shorts and we continually get these roughing the passer penalties. Oof. Well, yeah, the defense was a weird game because in a lot of ways it was very good. For one, you hold them to under 20 points, which Trevor Lawrence says, hey, anytime your defense holds a team under 20 points, especially at home, you should win that game. And you hold them to two for 14 on third down which JT, I believe that was your key. That was phenomenal. You know, you're talking about a, about less than 20% of the time the Browns have third down that they got a first down. But my big key for the defense was you had to make big plays. This was an opportunity. This was a Browns offense that was not good, that played like trash against the Cowboys, that was beat up, that had a lot of injuries. I said, the Cowboys had 10 big plays when you talk about sacks, fourth down stops, or turnovers against the Browns. I said, you just got to have half of that. And you'll be fine. And we did not have close to half of that. We had two. We had a Josh Hines Allen sack and we had a Foyer Aluicon sack. We had zero turnovers, zero fourth down stops. The Browns were three for three, as you mentioned earlier, JT on fourth down. Two big plays against a terrible, terrible offense. Does not cut it. That was bad. Uh, if I had to grade, obviously the offense is going to be F, F minus. The defense was C. They passed. They did enough for the, the, the Jags to win the game, but they did not make big plays. The defense is actually worse than what it lets on because a lot of those third down stops, they actually got it to third and in inches uh, yes. where they bear. I mean, it could have gone either way if they actually got it or not. Uh, and then, oh, by the way, they got it on fourth down. So, yes, they converted. And then also, if the offense was any sort of smart on the Browns, they should have just thrown it to Jerry Judy every single time. Monteric Brown is not fast enough to keep up with him and man. He burned him every time. And I would have just done drag route after drag route after drag route because he just couldn't keep up with them. I like him. He He's a very good tackler, but he's not a fast enough to keep up with a speedy guy and man and you know we lie to ourselves once again and say oh you know we can just fix that well well it, it was just a few mistakes no he's just not fast enough to keep up with them yeah and, and for me i don't blame if anything i give monteric brown praise because he like btj on offense seemed to be the only guy that provided any sort of intensity any sort of fire it's just bizarre that you have all these veterans, all these guys getting paid so much money, and they're all standing around watching someone else to make a play. I can't tell you how many times the offensive line, the end of the play, you just see guys standing around. On defense, you'll see two to three guys go for the ball, and you'll see a guy five or six yards away that could go run and gain tackle and make sure he doesn't get any extra yards, and they just don't. They're like, oh, well, that's not my lane. I'm not going to go and make a big play. And so... At least Monteric Brown has given it his all. For a seventh-round guy, I'm like, I'd rather have that than these talented guys who are just not playing with fire because you have Josh Hines out, which we already talked about. He had seven pressures, which is nice, but only one sack. He's a guy that just got paid big-time money. Very little impact. Andre Cisco, this is a guy that we've said, hey, he's got the potential to, to, to get a big extension. Well, he's not making big plays. Five tackles and, and got burnt on several uh, coverages as well. You know, Trayvon Walker, the number one overall pick, has a great first game and then is super duper quiet while every Jags fan is watching the Lions, watching Hutchinson go get four and a half sacks. So all these Guys that are vets that should be bringing the fire, that should be making these game-changing plays, are just not. And that's why, look, again, I'm already embracing my inner villain. Joey, you can keep saying we're going to turn around. This is a playoff team. This is a talented team. It's not. This is a broken team, and yep. it is. It's time to talk about the draft. And it's time to start thinking, hey, maybe we need to start losing these games and just clean house clean house from GM to coaching to, to all around because 
It's a messed up. It's a broken team. Yes, we're only 0-2. Yes, there's still 15 more games, but this thing is not going to turn around. This is broken. The whole thing is broken. Blow it up. It's over. Like the the here's the reality. You had you had back to back first overall picks, and you 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 spent a quarter of a billion dollars on a quarterback who right now is playing at that fifteen to twenty level, and you 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 paid a ton of money to a good a good defensive end who is a good player, but he's not a dominant. I mean, TJ Watt, Hutchinson, these guys are potential Hall of Fame guys. These guys feel like perennial pro, all pro guys, whereas Josh Allen feels like a very good pro bowl level defensive end. He's not somebody teams have to overly game plan for. Yes, and they no. overly game plan for him. And yes, uh, some of his situation right now is the fact that teams are are focusing on him. But guess what? Teams focus on TJ Watt and Hutchinson every day, and yet they figure out ways to overcome that. Walker's been a nice player. He'll probably have double-digit sacks. I'm not hating on either one of these guys. I think they're both good. But the reality is we don't have true difference makers on defense. And all the Jag fans that say they love Cisco, you're spot on, Jack. I kept saying in the offseason, I was like, look, the, the, the stats show he's like a very average guy. We just like him because of uh, because he's our guy and, and we've seen him make an interception or two. But he's not somebody you should resign and certainly not somebody you should be resigning to top five money like we love to do for everybody else. There's a reason when the NFL did their NFL top 100 where the players voted, the Jaguars only had two players. And now, obviously, they're definitely not going to put Trevor in there. It would only be Josh Hines Allen. Say what you want about Balky. Say what you want about this team and it being the most talented team. But Shad Khan may be the only one who believes that because we only have one top 100 player on this entire roster. And that is just crazy for how much money we've spent, how many good draft picks we've had. One player that is in the top 100 in the tire league that's messed up yeah i mean it, it's poor and it's poor to see how defeated everyone already looks i mean no one seems to hold themselves accountable other than trevor cisco has had good game like it's it's mind-boggling this i i will be the only one who stands up here but this team is talented but it's just so poorly run they are so mentally weak. They aren't getting ready for the games at all. I haven't seen any sort of fire since the playoff game in 2022. It, it's disgustingly run. They have more fire in the preseason games than they do in the regular season. They are playing as if this was a preseason game. This is a home opener. You just had the win against the Dolphins and you let it go. And you have people tweeting, uh, saying, keep that same energy. We're going to come back fierier than ever. Yet Christian Kirk has one catch for negative one yards. There's yep. no one to be seen. How does Evan Ingram, I understand it's an injury, but how do you get injured in the pregame warmup? Like, what is going on? Savage is getting hurt during practice. What, what are we doing? Why does it seem like this team does everything to crumble? We are taking the ball out of the end zone when no one else is returning the ball, and we've fumbled it twice now. We have been lucky on both fumbles, but stop taking the ball out. Guess what? We don't have the special teams figured out, so don't touch that ball. Don't I thought even... Parker Washington was supposed to be just as good as Agnew. Why is he not seeing the field? I would pray for Agnew. Why are we not re-signed him? Devin Duvernay is not that quick, and he does not look that good. I know he's been a pro bowler, but he doesn't look fiery, and I have not seen any sort of quickness, whereas Agnew would turn the field around when everything was down and everyone was sad. Agnew brought the power and the, the, the spirit. No. Multiple games last year, we won because of Agnew. Agnew is way better than Dunerve. I completely agree That's with you. That's fine. That's fine. But Agnew is the definition of these guys we've just been talking about that Jaguars fans like, but the rest of the league don't. There's a reason why we keep saying, oh, yeah, these guys are good and they don't show up. And there's a reason why no one else has signed Agnew. It's because he's he's a Jag. He's just another guy, just like a lot of this roster. No, I think he's not signed because no one is returning the ball. 
There's no reason to have that's him. not true. The, that's- the the teams have literally spent so much time and energy and money signing returners, and he was not yes, signed. People- they did, and guess what? Guess how many returns there were this uh, in the last two weeks? Not many, but that's my point. You can't say they're not signing them because they did and they didn't go get Agnew, but that, it doesn't well, really matter. Because he would be expensive. They went and signed He's not rookies. expensive. He's not expensive anymore once he realizes that nobody else was willing to pay the price that he thought he wanted. I'm sure he's come off that original price. He's not, not going to get signed. Anyways, we're we're beating a, a, a dead horse. I, you know, I don't think people care that much whether or not we have Agnew or not. But it is a sign where you talk about offense, defense, special teams. We were 0 for 3 in every area. And, and the worst part is the Browns played horrible. They just did. I mean, they had 13 penalties for 100 yards. There was a lot of big plays that they had. They got called back on penalties. Uh, again, they were 2 for 14. On third down, we had lots of opportunities to make huge plays, and we just didn't. Over three, offense loss, defense loss, special teams loss on Sunday, and guess what? We get to go play on prime time, which typically the Jaguars stink, and we get to go play the Buffalo Bills, who look incredible. Yep. 0-3, here we come. Well, that is going to be it. That's enough uh, free therapy for the Jags. That's enough doom and gloom, but seriously, we do want to engage with you. We know you have a lot of hot takes, too. So um, whether you're watching this on YouTube, just drop it right there in the comments. Apple, let's go ahead and do this. Still give us five-star rating, please, because even if the Jaguars are not going to give it their all on the field, we're going to give it 110% on the pod. So give us your five-star rating, but give us either vent about your frustration with the Jags or put in the five-star rating, how do the Jaguars turn this around? But we want to engage with you. We love Jacksonville Jaguars, even though they sometimes hate us or maybe all the time hate us. We love Jaguars fans. We're still the best fans in the world because we never, ever, ever give up on our team and so we are going to close it out in a slightly different way today Boom. Boom.